This episode is brought to you by the Newman Center for the Performing Arts. Because they're bringing Aoife O'Donovan and Hocktail to Denver for a concert on Saturday, March 30th. So if you loved O'Donovan's thrice Grammy-nominated album, Age of Apathy, this is your chance to see her live. Rolling Stone called it stunning, so you should probably check it out. And Hocktail is a progressive bluegrass supergroup who have worked with Punch Brothers, Dave Rawlings Machine, Crooked Still, and a bunch of your favorite acoustic and Americana acts. Tickets are on sale now to catch Aoife O'Donovan and Hocktail at the Newman Center on Saturday, March 30th. You can find more info at the link in our show notes. Today on CityCast Denver. Some state lawmakers are pushing legislation to make housing density a priority, but with density comes something that could be even more controversial, a potential limit on parking. Ken Truppel, founder of the Denver Infill blog and professor of urban planning at CU Denver, says less parking is a really, really good thing. But why? Today is Monday, March 18th. I'm Bree Davies, and here's what Denver's talking about. Trouble. Welcome to CityCast Denver. Thank you. It's wonderful to be here. So, Ken, I'm going to be honest. Um, I'm a little hesitant to dive into this topic because uh, we're talking parking. Right. And parking can be really divisive. Why do you think that is? Well, parking is, for most people, uh, a part of their daily routine, or at least it's frequent enough in their life that it matters to them. So... If people are talking about making changes to parking, its availability, the cost of parking, the rules around parking or whatever, that's something that at least for some people may cause them to at least uh, pay attention and and maybe get a little concerned. <laughs> yeah, I think about it sometimes as a thing that I don't have to think about, but always think about, yeah. you know, where am I going? What am I doing there? Is there parking? Um, Well, we really wanted to talk about this because legislators are working on a new proposal to change parking policy across the state, and their bill would eliminate parking minimums. Can you explain what that means and and why some folks are excited about it? So parking minimums are essentially requirements that says that for any new development, whether it's office or residential or retail or whatever, that the developer building the project would need to include as part of that development, a certain number, minimum number of parking spaces. And this has been around for a long time. Uh, You know, back in the early part of the 20th century, cars were starting to get pretty popular. And initially, cities like pre-World War II cities were looking at this parking issue thinking, well, how can we as a city provide this parking for these new things called cars that more and more people are getting. That we aren't built for this yeah. era. This era city you're talking about yes, is not built for. Exactly. But then the Great Depression happened and then World War II, and then it it just exploded. And so we had suburbanization, and then, of course, everybody was buying cars and driving everywhere. We were putting in interstate highways all over the place. And so it was during that era when cities around the country started to amend their zoning codes to require parking. They changed their approach, though, and said, you know, rather than having the city try to build parking garages or whatever all over the place, let's just force that on the private sector. So let's require individual developers and property owners to have to provide their own parking rather than the city trying to provide it in sort of a you know, municipal sense. Now, when I, one of the things that I think is most interesting about this story is where did they come up with how many parking mm. spaces is necessary for any particular type of use, right? Well, the short answer to that is they made it up. So you're saying a type of use, you mean... I'm a developer, I wanna build apartments. Mm -hmm. However many parking spaces are required for me was sort of just pulled out of thin air. Yeah, and literally every different type of thing. So what about a bowling alley? If you wanna build a bowling alley, how many spaces do you need? How about a hair salon? How about a gymnasium? I mean, just every different type of use from industrial to commercial, office, retail, and residential, they came up with a number. 
And those initial numbers that they came up with, they literally just made them up. And not only did they just make them up, but they decided that the, the best thing to do is to pick a number that would be the number of car spaces, uh, parking spaces needed for the maximum capacity or use of the building or um, space in question. So what if every single lane in that bowling alley is being used? What if every chair in that restaurant is filled, okay? So they came up with these numbers for the the, you might say the worst case scenario in terms of traffic. Everybody or drove there. Everybody drove there. So even today in the years, in you know, 2020s, we still have zoning codes across the country that have required minimum parking spaces per specific use that's based on numbers that were made up 70 years ago and assuming that it was the maximum capacity, um, you know, moment for that use. It's it's insane. Yeah, I think what you're saying, too, is this legislation is kind of a massive change. It could be. Yeah, it certainly could be. So I, I'm thinking about the the things that you were just describing and this, how we were applying these rules to cities. And I think about downtown Denver at this moment, full of parking garages, full of surface lots. How did we get this way? How did Denver get this way? Yeah. So what's interesting about downtown Denver is that downtown Denver has not had parking minimum requirements. In fact, there are no parking requirements at all in downtown Denver. And it's been that way since I think the 1970s or 80s. So that means I could build a building right now and put no parking, no yep. parking garage, provide no parking on, on the land. That's correct. Or I could build... 10 stories of garage. That's correct. It doesn't, there's no rules. That's correct. So the parking that we do have in downtown um, represents parking that a developer chose to put in. So in some cases, like for example, um, there's a, a new hotel, uh, I think it's Hyatt Centric, at the corner of 18th and Champa or Curtis, somewhere over there. Um, it was, it's like a 13 story hotel, opened up a couple years ago. Not a single parking space. Okay. Interesting. So, and they didn't have to. Um, on the other hand, we have an example like Block 162, which is a 30 story office tower that opened a few years ago at the corner of basically like Welton and 15th that has 12 levels of parking, 956 spaces. Almost a thousand Almost parking Almost a thousand spaces. parking spaces. Now, what I find particularly irritating about that project, at least their parking aspect of it, the building itself is beautiful, at least the parts <laughs> above the parking podium. But what I find particularly kind of irksome about that project is that the block bounded by Welton, California, 15th and 16th is arguably one of the most transit rich and accessible built blocks in all of downtown Denver. 15th Street, is a major bus line corridor. You have the 16th Street Mall sure. on the one side, and then at the corner of 16th and California, you have a light, light rail, rail station, okay? And yet the developer still chose to put in about a thousand parking spaces. So other than irking you, me, <laughs> the urban planning types who are looking at a building and thinking that, how does that really matter though to somebody who's downtown, that building versus the one that has no parking? Yeah. It's a great question, and I think what we need to, to, to answer that question, we have to go back and look at what is the fundamental existential nature of downtown? Yes. What makes downtown downtown, what makes it different than any other place in the city is its walkability. Okay? Yeah. I mean, by definition, you could say a downtown is the most walkable place. In fact, not only is it the most walkable place, but that's its imperative. I mean, that's why it exists in part is to give us a place in our community where you walk everywhere, where you do not need to drive. And there's this richness of transit and bike and pet infrastructure that creates this amazing environment where people can walk and enjoy this urban space. So parking, on the other hand, is fundamentally antithetical to walkability. Cars are big 4,000 pound machines that 
frankly, don't mix well with fragile human sure. beings who are, you know, walking around. So, and, and not only is there this incompatibility between cars and pedestrians, but their, uh, their presence, and particularly in, let's say, parking lots, really are, are visually unpleasant, distracting. They provide no activity, nothing interesting to look at. Uh, in fact, on, on my Denver Info uh, blog, for years and years and years, we've used this phrase, parking lots are soul-sucking black holes in the <laughs> urban fabric, okay? So the last thing that we want to do, if we want downtown Denver to be this amazing, walkable place in our city, is to have more parking. This episode is brought to you by JLL. Get an insider view into the world of commercial real estate with JLL's podcast, Trends and Insights, the Future of Commercial Real Estate. Whether you're curious about making cities more sustainable, the evolution of office space, or AI opportunities, this podcast will help keep you a step ahead. Tune in for candid conversations with business leaders about the biggest trends impacting how we live, work, and play. Subscribe to Trends and Insights now at jll.com slash podcast. Shipping can make or break a sale, so optimize how you ship your orders with ShipStation. They make it easy to automate and manage orders no matter how big your business grows. And they might even be able to help reduce shipping and warehouse costs. So optimize and keep up your momentum for growth with ShipStation. Sign up for your free 60-day trial now at ShipStation.com and use the code P-O-D. That's ShipStation.com with the code P-O-D. So I want to go back to this legislation because it sounds like eliminating parking minimums maybe wouldn't really affect Denver. Like, is there anything that you would change about parking policy here in Denver? Well, um, I think it would affect Denver. Now, um, Denver, being uh, the largest city and being you know fairly progressive in this, has made efforts over the you know past uh, decade or so to start to bring down those parking minimums. So the city has done a good job on that. But it's not citywide, it's only in certain areas, and it's still, in my opinion, not as good as it could be. So this legislation would would still impact Denver because it would basically say to Denver, you can't have any parking minimums, even though Denver has done a decent job of starting to lower them here and there. So um, I would pair having no parking minimums with having parking maximums. So um, a parking minimum simply says that the city can't make a developer put in any parking, but the developer is free to still put in parking and they should to some degree probably to meet what they think is, is a reasonable demand for parking for their project. But some developers go way overboard. Um, you, going back to that block 162 example, I think having 1000 parking spaces occupying 12 levels, three underground and nine above grade, on a block with a transit station is ridiculous, okay? If we had parking maximums, the city could have said, well, you know, based on certain uh, formula, based on the square footage of the building or whatever, that that there would have been a cap on the number of parking spaces um, that the developer could have put in. Uh, another good example. So down um, near the Alameda station, you know how they're redeveloping where like the old Kmart was oh, yes. and all of that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So just a couple of months ago, a developer filed an initial concept plan with the city planning office for another apartment building to be located in that area. It's literally one block from the Alameda station. The developer is proposing in this initial plan, which can change, so it's not set in stone, but they are um, planning to put in double the number of parking spaces that the city currently requires, because there's still a parking requirement, a minimum in that area, which is 0.75 spaces per apartment. Interesting. Okay. So if you had, uh, you know, 100 apartments, that would be 75 parking spaces, right? Well, the developer is proposing to put in double the number that the city, that of the city's minimum. And it's one block from a transit station. Uh, and it's pretty pretty walkable in that area. You've got Broadway right there with lots of shops. And well, that's it's becoming in that one section. So I love this example mm -hmm. because this is at the corner of Alameda and Broadway. Mm -hmm. This, for a long time, at least for my lifetime, was a, 
a bunch of strip malls surrounding a ginormous parking lot. Mm -hmm. It is impossible to navigate as a pedestrian. This new development that's coming in is attempting to change that whole use, right? That's right. So they're trying to make it more dense, more walkable, but you're saying at the same time, developers are still putting in a ton of parking spots or parking spaces, which is signaling drive here. That's exactly correct. And so, but here's the thing is, I want to talk more about parking as an amenity in a minute, but do you worry that like putting a maximum would, would signal to a developer, well, I'm just going to walk away then. If you're going to tell me I can't put parking in there and I know that's what my consumer might want, I'll just go build somewhere else. I don't think so because first of all, uh, developers aren't doing a development because of the parking. They're doing it for the housing that they anticipate being able to make a profit by developing uh, housing. And we clearly have a demand for housing. Right. And so um, they you know, th- their main motivation is going to be to put in the housing because they can make money doing so. In fact, if you lower the amount of parking that they uh, would put in, that is going to save them money because parking is expensive. And ideally, it would reduce the cost to the residents. So you're saying if those spots didn't have to be there, if the the builder could build the whole apartments with no parking, that might in an ideal world, reduce the rents a little bit because they wouldn't be paying, people wouldn't be paying to park. Correct. Or they just, they would be, I don't know, I don't want to say paying to park, but like they wouldn't be paying for the parking space that's being taken up in this building. This is the where it gets, it becomes a tough sell to me. Because I'm also thinking about going back to the amenity idea. If you look at any real estate listing for a condo or a townhouse here in Denver, it will tell you, Free par- this one, this unit comes with two deeded parking spots. It is sold as an amenity. Don't you think that that is something that people still want when they're looking? I don't know. I can see why. I'm just saying I can see why developers might build that in as an amenity. Yeah, it's a really good question because, in fact, I, I was actually thinking about this myself in, in anticipation of our conversation today. So I looked up some statistics, uh, kind of the latest census numbers. So if you look at owner-occupied multifamily housing, so condos, Mm -hmm. um, in Denver specifically, city and county of Denver, um, only 3% of those households, owner-occupied households, do not own a vehicle. Only 3%? Only 3%. So So for condos, people who own a condo have cars and they want to be able to put their car in their space, right? Totally. But the percentage of renter-occupied units in Denver that do not own a car is 16%. So 16% of all the renters out there don't need a parking space. And yet, if the project does not unbundle the parking from the rent, then that means those people, whether they like it or not, are paying in their rent the cost of parking that they are not using. So it really is a, it's a renter's issue maybe a little bit too here. I mean, I think renters are a particularly um, challenged group at the moment just because they don't have kind of that control over the cost of their housing other than just moving to someplace that's less expensive. And so they're very sensitive to rent and what and the factors that cause their rent to go up or down. And so when we combine a housing shortage, which is putting pressure upwards on rents anyway, with developers who are putting in excess parking and then passing that cost on to renters, that's just making our housing more expensive. So this is an affordability conversation just absolutely. as much. Absolutely, okay. absolutely. Thank you for demystifying the minimums and maximums conversation when it comes to parking. And thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, this has been a pleasure. And I'm happy to talk more about this in the future. (laughs) A couple more things on the bill banning parking minimums that's moving its way through the state legislature. We reached out to one of the bill's sponsors, Stephanie Vigil of Colorado Springs, and she clarified that nothing in the bill would ban parking maximums. Also, it looks like this bill has a good chance of passing into law. The Libertarian Magazine Reason asked Governor Jared Polis what would be the bill he's most excited to sign. And his first example was parking reform. That's 
That's all for today here on CityCast Denver. If you enjoyed this show, why not take a minute to tell Parking Robots, Lodimus Prime, and Dave about us. Rate the show wherever you get your podcasts and subscribe to our morning newsletter and learn more about us at denver.citycast.fm. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more news from around the city. See you later. Parking robots, Lodimus Prime and Dave. I like big parking robots and I cannot lie. I'm just kidding.